Hi, this is John Small. Today I'm going to be creating a pet portrait using Luminance colored pencils by Karen Dosh and Stonehenge paper. This pet portrait took over 20 hours to complete, but here we've got it on a time-lapse video. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, hit the red subscribe button down below and get notifications bell. Also give a thumbs up. Okay, let's get started. And here I'm adding in the light colored pencil on the first layers not using a lot of pressure, going from light pencils to the darker pencils, adding several layers which gives more depth to the colored pencil pieces. And once you've got enough layers down, I actually paint on odorless mineral spirits by Gamblin. This is what I'm actually painting in here. It dissolves the pigment and it lets it soak into the paper a little bit deeper. And working my way down, I've got a lot more colored pencils to use. It's a lot of blending that happens. I go in with the lighter colors first, adding in the darker ones after, and you keep building those. You'll see I go over them. I've added more odorless mineral spirits. Be sure to let the odorless mineral spirits dry before you apply any more colored pencil. When the paper is wet with the mineral spirits, the pressure from the pencil, even light pressure, can damage the paper, which will in fact not let you add more layers on after that, and you'll be pretty much stuck where you are at that point. So you really have to have a lot of patience and just keep going in very slowly, layer upon layer. It's the best way to build them. It's really how you give depth. And here's more odorless mineral spirits, adding that in. You can see it will darken. It's actually pulling the color, the pigment, out of the colored pencils that have been laid down on the paper. There will be a graininess when you first put colored pencils down, and what the paper has is a lot of tooth, which is basically hills and valleys you can think of it as. There's a lot of little nooks that need to get filled in. Best not to put a lot of pressure in, just go lightly. Do several layers before you add the mineral spirits and it will blend that in. And then after it's dried, maybe about 20 minutes, you really have to check the paper. Give it a lot of time. Give it at least 20 minutes, depending how wet the paper is and how thick the paper is. You don't need a lot of colored pencil uh, in your layers. You just need very light layers and you don't need a lot of mineral spirits. It's just, just enough to where you can see that the pigment is soaking into the paper and you'll still retain the tooth of the paper, which will allow you to add more layers afterwards. And now starting in on the eye, I've already added a few colors. I've added some orange underneath, a little bit of amber, and this is a lighter brown that I'm putting on top of that. Many layers on the eye, no matter what color the eye is, there's several layers underneath. And this brown eye for this dog Kira is not just one color, it's actually several colors. The mineral spirits will help blend that in, give a little bit more depth. Some of those layers underneath will be showing through. It's not obvious at all, but there are a blend of many colors that help make up that eye. And retaining that sparkle in the white part of the eye, that's the whitest part that we usually see in colored pencils. It's usually a reflection of some sort, an actual true light. Uh, most everything else is not white. It's forms of gray and light tans, but the the white in the eye that you see was just the paper that I retained and didn't put any pigment on that. So when I used the odorless mineral spirits around the eye, I was really careful not to go into that part of the white. And here adding a lot of pieces of fur. Uh, what you want to do with the fur too is go in the direction that the fur grows. So if you're doing a pet portrait, look really closely at the uh, photograph that you use as your reference and just make sure that you are moving the pencil in the direction of the fur as it grows. And that's what I'm doing here around the eye. There was a lot of concentration of darker fur uh, near Kara's eye, so I wanted to make sure I got that in fully. And here we go. You can see the next one I'm doing is the lighter color, which is the first colors that go into that eye. Just adding that really, really light color first because those are going to be showing through. And this is the area I'm doing now, which is the eyelid. Uh, and the shadow that it's casting underneath. It just takes a lot of patience. This is a sped up video. This pet portrait probably took more than 20 hours, maybe closer to 25. And um, it's just a lot of um, patience you need to have and not rush it through. Just work each section at a time 
and build those layers. That's really important. Make sure you're keeping your lightest areas light and your dark areas dark. That contrast gives a lot more realism to a piece. And here we go with more colors for that eye. I uh, really want to capture the depth that the brown eye has and I'm just going to lightly add a little bit more color. You can see there's several colors and it's you're really just trying to match what you can see that the dog may have in the eye. Um, eyes are pretty complex. They're spherical. They capture light different ways and this is just slowly adding them on. I don't ever go into working like a dog's eye or a cat's eye or a human eye for that matter, with just a brown or just a green. There's a lot of different uh, elements, and again, that makes that eye look a little bit more realistic. So adding some of the dark areas where the pupil is, and just underneath the eye where the eyelid was darker, and there were more areas of shading um, around the eyelids. This is a really light one. It's probably not showing up that well on the camera. You can even see there was some nearly white I was laying down. That was just to help preserve the lighter tones underneath uh, Kira's fur, which is really important to get down because you want all the pieces of paper to be covered uh, unless you're retaining a white like in the sparkle of the eye. And that bridge of the nose up in the muzzle, that's going to have some darker fur. That's the uh, pattern. Uh, of color that um, many dogs have and uh, Kira had that. A lot of times that's where the uh, fur splinters off, where it goes in different directions and it generally casts a little bit more shading in that area. But every dog is unique, every pet is unique, so they all have different um, uh, different characteristics. And initially here the Pet portrait, the photograph I was working from, there was some dryness on the dog's nose which had created um, some different colors and some different textures from what we usually see. And that's what I worked on to duplicate that. When the commission was nearly completed, I presented it to the owner to uh, get final approval and, and make sure everything was in the right direction. And um, it was just brought to my attention that in this photograph, the pet happened to have that condition with its nose but it didn't have that for most most of the time that they owned that dog and um, we ended up making an adjustment uh, later on to where I took the, some of that damage uh, uh, the dryness from the dog's nose and I brought that down into more of a uh, standard color which I didn't have a photograph to work from um, so I just um, added on a more smoothness uh, to it you'll see that as the video progresses and Kira was wearing a, um, a Tigger-like um, cloth here, costume. So it was a, a playful and whimsical pet portrait. And that was the uh, memory they had uh, that really captured the personality and, and some fun times. So that's what I'm doing here. It's kind of like a felt uh, uh, cloth. So I'll, I'll continue to work on that too and try to get the depth of that adding a little bit of light again to where some of the areas of the nose had that lightness appearing. And the lighter colored pencils will help preserve a lightness underneath. So if you go over light, maybe white or off-white colored pencils, the darker ones that go on top of it won't be quite as dark as they would. It preserves a little bit of the lightness. and adding those mineral spirits in, just blending out that pigment. Once it's fully dry, again, going over with more colored pencils. There's a lot of layers, and you can see that, that very light touch. I'm not adding a lot of pigment at all. I'm not pushing down heavy on that paper. and more mineral spirits. You just paint them right on. It, um, it helps bring those colors and layers more to life and it's a, it's a great tool to have to use with colored pencils. There are also methods of burnishing which is where you at the ending stages you press very hard with the pencil and that will 
push the pigment into the crevices of the paper. But odorless mineral spirits gives you more of a chance to keep refining it uh, without damaging or burnishing the paper. And here, even though this is an orange cloth material, there's depth and darkness into the orange, and it's not just one or two forms of orange. Blues, purples, contrasting colors on the color spectrum, on the color wheel, will go into uh, creating these. So on the opposite of orange is blue, and we sometimes do that with reds by using green. Since the mineral spirits went down, I'm concentrating now back on the area of the nose, letting that mineral spirit dry um, on the neck and the cloth region. Still extending and adding those dark colors, coming back in again with a little bit more mineral spirits, painting that in, and you'll see it continues to darken and get a little bit more rich. And then once the mineral spirits dry, I'll end up going over that with more layers of colored pencil. And here I am adding some of this light. It's really a light and a subtle yellow. It uh, There are brighter colors of yellow I could put in, but I want to keep building these layers and just refining some more areas on that part of the fabric. Often you go back onto these areas and you retouch them and Often for me, these are done over several days. I don't like to rush through these, and I like to make sure I have a fresh set of eyes where I can look at it the next day. If you're working on one piece or one section too long, um, you could start to uh, not have a good discernment of, of where you're at with uh, your colors and making sure everything matches. So good to step away from it and look at it later, look at it the next day. Make sure you take rests in between just to make sure you stretch, you get more oxygen into your body, you can think a little bit more clearly, and uh, you come back to a piece a little bit more fresh. And again, adding more dark colored pencils. It's a lot of those shaded areas that really retain that depth where the light's not hitting that fabric. Uh, the depth of that orange really, really is uh, pretty strong. And coming in on the home stretch for this pet portrait, just added a little bit more color, a little bit more browns, and the reference photo was a little bit lighter than the actual dog. So this is Kira, and this is the final of the pet portrait. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up below and leave a comment. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, just hit that little circle right around here and it'll give you an option for notifications bell and go ahead and click that and it will alert you to when I upload new videos. I have a lot more art related videos coming up so I hope you'll stay tuned. Thanks again for watching.